If you don't know me, good. I'm kidding. My name is Milena. I make educational YouTube videos about how university is and how you can study for things. And I'm very glad that you are here if you are a new viewer. To my very loyal subscribers, of which only 15 are family and friends, and one is my boyfriend. Thank you for watching. So let's look at how to study for exams and midterms. And I'll be presenting them in narrator format. What is that, you might ask? This is it. This is narrator format. This is you. It's actually me, but let's just like pretend it's you. Now you're a student and you just want to understand what's being taught to you. So let's jump right in it. Tip number one, read the book. So remember that book the lecturer said is quite literally mandatory reading. But for some reason, everyone thinks it's a suggestion. Turns out that actually helps. So read it, just read the book. Oh, and a pro tip. Whenever you're highlighting, don't highlight full sentences. If you go over your page, you should find one word that sticks out the most that will help you remember what the content of the page was. Tip number two. If you can get the slides for each lectures, use that instead. Don't waste your time trying to write everything they're saying. Now you see, I used to always make handwritten notes because I felt like it would help me memorize the things a little bit better and also to understand them. But since everything is digital now anyways, it saves me a lot of time just taking the lecture slides and then annotating the things that I think are relevant. For example, remember for exam, or this is something you have to review, or even I didn't understand. Oh, but the Lord knows that if your notes look like this, you spend more time choosing what highlighter you were gonna use than actually understanding the content. Not having to note down everything someone is saying allows you to understand what they're saying. Tip number three, digital notes. I mean, if you're gonna take notes, you might as well keep them in the same place as all your other study material. Tip number four, use digital flashcard platforms like Anki and turn your notes into questions. Turning your notes into questions allows you to understand the material in a more deeper sense. Instead of having to memorize a few things, if you ask yourself the questions you think might come up in the exam, you'll be more prepared for the questions that will actually show up. A great feature Anki has is that you can see your statistics. They tell you things like how long you studied and what needs to be seen again. A handy thing of Anki is also you can add photos and videos and audios. So that means that anything you want to use to try to study or review, you can add on one platform, which is pretty handy. What I also like to do if I encounter a question that I don't really know how to answer, I'll put that question on Anki and then have the answer as the answer so that I can see if I can remember how to answer those kind of questions. Also, you can express how well you knew the answer by the different options that Anki gives you. You can either answer that it was good or it might need to be seen again. I go on Anki around four times a week for between like one or two hours just to see if I understood the material. Tip number five, active recall. Mm -hmm, maybe we should explain active recall. In simplest terms, active recall is basically when you stimulate your own memory to recall certain information that you would like to retain. This can be done through various retrieval practices that you're actually seeing when you're doing Anki. Like many of us, you might be taking a passive approach to studying by rereading, making summaries, and highlighting. It's already been scientifically proven that people who use active recall instead of passive recall perform better in exams. And you might be hesitant to take advice from a stranger about how you should be studying, because changing the way you study is always a risk. If you would like to see more scientific evidence of the effectiveness of active recall, I recommend you to watch the videos of Ali Abdal. He's a doctor and a YouTuber, and if I wasn't able to convince you, hopefully his scientific proof will. Tip number six, explain the material to someone. Because if they get it, that means you got it too. And also presenting it makes you more confident in what you know. Note on this one, you probably don't want to give the presentation to someone who's in your class or a fellow student just because you'll probably end up tutoring them for free. See, I usually just explain it to my boyfriend or my family and my friends and they usually get the gist of it. Basically, if you can explain it to someone who has no idea what you're talking about, then you're doing a great job. Good on you. You're doing great. On some occasions, I even talk to myself. Just she to mainly talks to herself in the room. Tip number eight, for open book exams, make clear notes. 
<laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was in a different format, so I hope it gave it the va va voom that you needed to watch a how to study video. Because at this point, if you've gotten to me, that means that you've watched a ton of study videos. Currently, I have a few videos on hold and to be released. But if you have anything you want to see or you find would be very helpful for you in your studies, do let me know by commenting down below 